My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 190 in the series of basic math. Today we will have our 10th lesson. Today we will have our 10th lesson in the series of 15 on the topic of probability. On the topic of probability. Today we will learn what it means for two events to be mutually exclusive. What does it mean when we say the two events are mutually exclusive? This, by the way, what we're going to talk about today, most of this stuff that we will discuss today is the same exact concept, same exact notion, same exact topic as what we learned on day number 182. I'm doing it one more time just for the sake, just for the sake of doing it one more time because it is an important concept. So what does it mean when we, when, when, when a statistician, when your statistics professor tells you that the events are mutually exclusive? What does it mean? Let's find out, shall we? Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's take a look at a couple of examples and that will help us understand what it means for when we say events are mutually exclusive. This notion of events being mutually exclusive plays role. This notion of two events being mutually exclusive comes into play. It plays role when we are asked to calculate the probability of either event A or B. When we are asked what are the odds that either event A or B will happen, well in order for us to be able to answer that question, what are the odds of either A or B, not A and B, not A and B, but A or B, in order for us to be able to answer that question, we have to first understand whether or not the two events are mutually exclusive. Let's take a, take a, let's, let's take a look at a couple of examples. So we have two scenarios here, we have two classes, class of 30 students, Perhaps it's the same class, who knows? So we have a class of 30 students. It's the same class, 30 students, so as you can see. Made up of 18 boys and 12 girls. Made up of 18 boys and 12 girls. So here, if somebody were to ask us, what are the odds of picking a boy? Well, the odds of picking a boy is simply 18 out of 30. What are the odds of picking a girl? Well, the odds of picking a girl is just 12 out of 30. The question is, what are the odds of picking either a boy or a girl? If I were to put their, their names of the students on a piece on a sheet of paper or, 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 or on a ticket and put those on a, in a bucket, and if I were to close my eyes and pick one student at random, if I were to pick one one student's name at random, what are the odds that the students that I pick happens to be either a boy, either a boy or a girl? Well, that's a pretty silly question. The odds that I will pick either a boy or a girl is 100%. Why? Because the person that I pick has got to be either this or that. Do you understand? Leaving, leaving aside for the time being uh, the complication that one might encounter in the real world. Do you understand? So, how do we figure out? The odds of picking a boy is simply 18 out of 30. The odds of picking a girl is 12 out of 30. And therefore, the odds of picking either a boy or a girl is simply 30 out of 30 or 100%. Very simple. In other words, in other words, the odds of picking two events, A or B, I shouldn't have said B or G here because this is going to get complicated. Let's call them event A and event B. Or we can put it here. The odds of event A or B, two events, two different events, is simply the odds of event A plus the odds of event B. So in this case, the event A would be picking the boy, the event A would be picking the boy, uh, picking the girl, and the and the odds of picking either A a or B, the odds of event, odds of either event A happening or B happening is simply A, odds of event A plus B. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here. So here we are asking the same thing. What are the odds? I'm not going to write everything down. I'm just going to tell you. What are the odds that if you were to pick one student at random, what are, what are the odds that if you were to pick one student at random, that that student studies, that student studies either French or Spanish. Okay, watch what happens. Either French or Spanish. And if we were to do the same thing that we did here, we just simply added up the two probability, probability of picking a boy plus the probability of picking a girl. If you, pick, if you do the same thing here, what we'll end up saying is that the odds of picking a, a, a student who studies either French or Spanish is equal to the odds of picking up somebody who studies French plus the odds of, odd of somebody who's, who's, who's studying Spanish. 
what are the odds that somebody, the person that you picked at random uh, studies French? Well, it's simply 18 out of 30. What are the odds that the student that you pick at random studies Spanish? Well, there are 20 of them out of 30. 22 rather, 22 two of them out of 30. And therefore, the odds of picking a student who studies either French or Spanish is simply 18 plus 22 over 30, which is 40 over 30. As you can as you can quite clearly see, this is insane. This is ridiculous. This is this doesn't make any sense. How can the odds of anything happening be more than 100 percent? We are saying that the odds of picking a person who studies either French or or German in a student in, in a class of 30 students is actually 40 out of 30. What's going on here? What's going on here? What is going on here is, I need the room, I left no room for myself to work in here, I don't want to raise anything, we're going to have to squeeze here. What's going on is this, what's going on is, we have, let's look at the Venn diagram, here is our, here is our French, let's call it French here, and here is our Spanish. And what's going on is that, we are told that 18 students, 18 students study French, 18 students study French, why don't we do the Venn diagram right here, it's 18 and 22. 18 and 20, let's do it right here. French and German, 18 students study French and 22 students study German. As you can clearly see, 18 plus 22 is 40. 18 plus 22 is 40, but we have only 30 students in the class. What does it tell us? It tells us that there are 10 students, there are 10 students that are being double counted. There are 10 students that are being double counted. Why are they being double counted? Because these 10 students here, these 10 students are such that when you count the number of people who speak French, you're counting these 10 people, and then when you count the number of people who speak German, you're counting those 10 people again. As soon as you put these 10 people here, that represents the people who study both French and German. As soon as we put the 10 there, we have to go back and adjust this figure. This 22 now becomes 12, and this 18 would have to become 8. And the, and the situation that we're dealing with is, the 8 represents the number of people who study only the French, 12 represents the number of people who study only the German, and there are 10 students who study both. Question is, what do we do with this work here? Well, obviously this work is not correct. We have to go back and do some adjustment here. The adjustment that we need to do here is that, when we look at 18 here, this 18 right here, you see, when we look at this 18 here, and then we looked at this 22 here, in this work, we have counted 10 people Twice, we have double counted 10 people who are studying both the languages. We counted those 10 people first as the number of people who study French, and we counted the same 10 people when we talk about the number of people who study German. Since we are double counting it, since we are counting the 10 twice, once as a German student, once as a French student, since we are counting it twice, we need to get rid of that 110. We need to get rid of that 110, and that is, that will represent the number of people who study both French and German. So how many study, how many students study French and German? Right here is 10. How many study both French and German? The answer is 10 right here. So we have to subtract that 10 over 30 and when we subtract the 10 over 30, we subtract that 10 over 30 over here and we subtract the 10 over 30 over here and then it makes sense, it makes sense that if everybody in the class it makes perfect sense that if everybody in the class, out of 30 students, if everybody is taking either French or German, that's the situation we're dealing with, that everybody is taking either one language or the other, there is no student who is taking a third language, and there is no student who is studying one language or no language. Everybody studies either French or German. I should have made it clear a long time ago in the beginning, I did not. If that's the case, then the odds that if you were to pick one student at random who studies either French or Spanish is 100% obviously. Because if everybody is studying French or German or both, then the R, if I pick one person at random, what are the odds that that student st studies French or German? It's 100%. Because everybody studies either French or German or both. There you go. But we would have not have found 100%, we would have not had a correct answer if we had not done this adjustment. If we had not done this adjustment. So the bottom line is, the bottom line is, when we're talking about, when we're talking about the odds of one event or the other event, when we're talking about odds of one or the other, 
we have to make this adjustment. We have to make this adjustment right here. We have to make this adjustment when? We have to make this adjustment when events are, when the events are, I'm going to erase this part, we need the room. So in this situation, we need to make this adjustment. This is situations when, when events are not mutually exclusive. Not, they are not mutually exclusive. Now let's talk about what does it mean for the two events to be mutually exclusive. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if, if one happens, if one happens, then other cannot. That's the definition of mutually exclusive. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if, if one happens, the other cannot. In other words, here, in other words, here, let's continue this here. I'm going to erase this part. We don't need this anymore here. I'm going to continue this part here. What's going on in reality is this. What's going on in reality is this. In this part here also, we also have minus the odds of A and B. We have that here in this scenario that I'm talking about. But what are the odds? So if you talk about A as the events of picking the uh, boy, this is the event A, and this is the event B. Let's, crop, let's erase this B and G so we don't get confused. Event A and B. We are describing event A. We are describing event A as picking a boy at random. We are describing event B as picking a girl at random. What are the odds that either A or B will happen? What are the odds that either event A or, or B will happen? It's 100%. A being the odds that you're going to pick a B, a boy, B being the odds that you're going to pick a girl. Well, the odds of either A or B is 100%. A or B, the odds of either A or B is equal to the odds of A plus the odds of B minus the odds of A and B. But A and B here, this part right here, this part right here, this part right here is zero. Why is it zero? Why are the odds? Why are the odds of event A and B happening at the same time zero? Because here in this context, what we're asking is, what are the odds that if I were to pick one person at random, that that person happens to be both a girl and a boy? Not bloody likely. It's zero. So because it is zero, we don't write it. It's not written. I'm going to read it now. The odds of A and B happening is the same as here, except here. Because they are not mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive means if one happens, other one cannot happen. In other words, in other words, if you pick one person at random and you tell me that the person that I picked uh, at random happens to be a girl, then the odds that the, bo the person that you pick also happens to be a boy is zero. It rules out the other event. If, if you already tell me that the person that you picked is a girl, then the odds that that person also happens to be a boy is zero. Let's look at another example. If you roll a dice, and if I ask you, what are the odds that the number that shows up on the on, on, on the dice happens to be, happens to be, what are the odds that if you roll a dice, what are the odds that the number that you roll happens to be even n odd? Even n odd. Well, that's zero. The number that you roll on a dice cannot be both even number and odd number. It's zero probability of even number and odd number happening at the same time is zero, that tells me that these two events, the odds of rolling an even number and the odds of rolling an odd number, when you roll a dice, the odds of rolling an even number and the probability of rolling an odd number, these two events are mutually exclusive. They are mutually exclusive. Two events, they are mutually exclusive because if one happens, if one happens, the other one cannot happen. If you tell me that the number that you just rolled happened to be an odd number, then it's not possible that you have that you have also rolled at the same time an even number. But it is possible in this scenario. In this scenario, it is possible. It is quite possible that if you pick one person at random, and if you tell me that that person that you picked at random studies French, then that in itself, just because you told me that that person studies French, that in itself does not rule out the possibility that that person may also study German. But if you tell me that if you pick a number, a, a number that you roll on a dice happens to be an odd number, if you tell me that number that you roll is an odd number, then the possibility that you have also rolled an even number on the same roll is zero. 
That number cannot also be an even number and an odd number. These two are mutually exclusive events. Therefore, the odds of even and odd is zero. Is zero, therefore, it does not appear. It does not appear, we do not write it, and we just leave it like this. So if the two events, so here's the bottom line, here's the punchline. If the two events are mutually exclusive, then the odds of A or B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of B. On the other hand, if the two events are not mutually exclusive, these two events are not mutually exclusive. The occurrence of one does not rule out the other. Just because you pick a person who studies French does not rule out the, uh, the odds that that person may also study German. It is quite possible that the person may have both characteristics. Do you understand? These two events are not mutually exclusive. Since they are not mutually exclusive, since they are not mutually exclusive, if you draw a Venn diagram, they will overlap. They will overlap. This overlapping area is the area that shows us the odds that that person may possess both of the characteristics, that both of those characteristics may be uh, occurring at the same time. The person that you picked at random happens to study French, happens to study French and German, right here. And uh, therefore, you will end up counting all of these people twice. Because you are double counting them, you need to subtract one quantity, right here. So this is what we use when we talk about the probability of A or B. The probability of event A or B equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B happening at the same time if the two events are not, not mutually exclusive. If they are mutually exclusive, then we look at this scenario. The probability of either A or B happening is simply the sum of the two. Because they are mutually exclusive. If one happens, the other one cannot happen. I was going to close this video at this point, but I'm going to continue now for the next probably three, four, five minutes. Let's look at a couple of examples with the dice. Okay? We're going to continue. I'm going to raise all of this thing. And we're going to roll the dice one more time. And let's see what happens. I need the room. So let's erase all of this thing. Here's event A. Let's call event A roll an even number. Let's call event B roll an odd number. Let's call event C let's call event C roll a prime number. Okay? And we'll see which which of these events are which pair when we may start making pairs, which pairs are mutually exclusive and which pairs are not. If they are mutually exclusive, then the odds of either this or that happening is simply the sum of the two plus two probability, sum of the two individual probability. Let's start with something simple. If, uh, one more time, event A, we are describing, at, uh, describing it as uh, odds of rolling an even number on a dice. Event B, we are describing as the odds of rolling an odd number. And event C, we are describing as rolling a prime number. So let's talk about it. What are the odds that A or B would happen? A or B. A is the odds of even number, B is the odds of, odds of rolling an odd number. Well obviously if you ask me what are the odds that if I roll a dice what I will get is either an even number or an odd number. Well that's 100 percent. Obviously the bloody thing has to be either one or the other. If you roll a dice the number that shows up the number has to be either an even number or an odd number. It's 100% guaranteed it's going to be one or the other. Why is it 100% guaranteed? Because this is simply the sum of the probability of A plus the probability of B. And that's it, we're done. This is equal to probability of A and probability of B. Why? Because here, in the case of A and B, here A and B are mutually exclusive. Why are they mutually exclusive? Mutual, mutually exclusive means, if you were to draw a Venn diagram, mutually exclusive means like this. This is even numbers and this is odd numbers. What are the odds of even number happening? Well, there are three even numbers. Two, four, six. What are the odds of odd numbers? Three, one, three and five. That's it. There is no overlapping area. There is nothing, no elements that belongs to both. So the odds of A or B happening is simply the odds of A or the odds of B, odds of A is 3 out of 6 because there are 3 even numbers. Odds of B is 3 out of 6 because there are 3 odd numbers and therefore the, the probability that you will rule either A or B is simply 100%. So that's it, we're done with that part. Let's move on to something different. 
How about the odds of odds of the probability of probability of A and B? Now this is A and B. Well, we just talked about it. If they are mutually exclusive, what are the odds that both A and B can happen? In other words, what are the odds that if you roll a dice, you will get a number that is both an even number and an odd number? Well, that's just damn silly. It's not going to happen. It's zero. We don't have to do any calculation. This is it. It's zero. Why is it zero? Why is it zero? Because that's what it means because that's what it means for the events to be mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means that mutually exclusive means that two events are mutually exclusive, are said to be mutually exclusive, that if one happens, if one happens, the other cannot happen. If one happens, the other cannot happen. In other words, the odds of both of them happening is zero. The odds of both of them happening, what are the odds that they will both happen? The answer is not bloody likely. It is not possible for you to be able to roll a number that is both an even number and an odd number. Let's carry on now. Let's talk about what are the odds that if you roll a dice, we talked about A or B, let's talk about A and C. Let's talk about A and C. A and C. Okay, watch what happens. Let's draw the pictures first. So A is the even number. So here is our, here are our even numbers, which is event A. What are the even numbers? Even numbers are 2, 4, and 6. And then event C are the prime numbers. Even event C we're describing as the prime number. So let's draw our prime numbers here. The prime numbers are 2, 3, and 5. If I roll a dice, if I roll a dice, there are three possible prime numbers I might roll. I might roll a 2. 2 is a prime number. 2 is the only even number that's a prime number. You should know that. 3 is a prime number and so is 5. So here's event number C. Here's the event C which is prime number. So what are the odds, what are the odds that uh, the number that you roll, what, what are the odds that the number that you roll, let's talk about all first. What are the odds that the number that you roll happens to be either an even number or a prime number? Well, let's find out. That is equal to the odds of rolling an even number plus the odds of rolling a prime number. Odds of rolling, odds of rolling an even number, as you can see, is three out of six. And odds of rolling a prime number is three out of six, which is hundred percent. Do you see a problem here? Do you see a problem here? This answer is not correct. It is not guaranteed. It is not guaranteed one hundred percent that if you roll a dice, the number that shows up is going to be both. Uh, is, uh, number that shows up is going to be either either an even number or a prime number. It's not 100%. This is not correct. It's not correct because these two events, as you can clearly see, is that if the way I drew them, the way they are drawn, you can clearly see that they are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. Just by looking at the pictures, you can tell. Just by looking at the pictures, you can tell that they are not mutually exclusive. Why? Because they have an overlapping area. Overlapping area tells us Overlapping area tells us that there is something in common. Something appears in both of those lists. And something that appears in both of those lists is this. 2 is a prime number and 2 is an even number. That should belong here. That 2, that 2 has been double counted. That, that event, this 2 represents the, the this, this 2 represents an event that, that you roll a dice, you roll a dice, and the number that you see happens to be both an even number and a prime number. It is possible, it is possible to roll a number on a dice that happens to be both an even number and a prime number. The and, A, 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 and B was zero before, A and C is not zero. Probability of, probability of A, and C, A and C is 1 out of 6 and that's right here. And that one event, that one event is double counted. Because we are double counting, we are first counting that 2 as an even number and then we are counting the same 2 as a prime number. Since we are counting it twice, we have to subtract 1. We have to go back and subtract 1 here. Minus probability of A and B. A and B. And when we do that, 
again I have left no room here we have to continue here let's, 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 do, let's continue here or oh, we can squeeze in underneath here the probability of A which is 3 out of 6 probability of C which is 3 out of 6 minus A and B which is one event 1 out of 6 so now we have now we have 3 plus 3 minus 1 3 plus 3 minus 1 it is 5 out of 6 what are the odds what are the odds that the number that you roll on a dice happens to be both on the uh, uh, not both rather, what are the odds that the number that you roll on a dice happens to be either an even number or a prime number? The answer is the chances are 5 out of 6. There are 5 out of 6 chances that the number that you roll is going to be either an even number or a prime number. Because there are two numbers that qualify as even number, there are two numbers that qualify as prime numbers, and there is one number that qualifies as both an even number and a prime number. You understand? This 5 hour 6 that we just did here, I'm going to make very last comment and then we close, going to close the video. So the answer is 5 out of 6. Well, I'm going to make one, one very last comment and we're going to close the video. I'm going to erase all of this thing. We already have it. So I can squeeze something in here, so, something that is very important. The probability of, probability of, when we talk about probability of A or B, what are the odds that we that, that we roll? But since we're talking about A or C, let's talk about A or C here, so that we get don't get confused because because we're using B as B for something else here. What are the odds that we roll an uh, an event A or C? Well, it's five out of six, which means the number that we roll could be an even number or a prime number, or it could be a number which possesses both characteristics. So technically speaking, this thing, what are the odds of choosing A or C is same as the odds of A or C or both. And that both part is right here, the 2 out of 5, uh, two, out, two, 2 that we see here, and that happens to be 5 out of 6. But what I'm trying to make you understand is that in most textbooks, in most textbooks, you will just see this. When, they, when, they, when, when you see this, they mean this these two, this concept and this concept are one and the same concept. There is no difference. We write it like this out of sheer laziness. We write it like this because it's quicker. But when we say A or C, A or C means either A or C or maybe both. Do you understand? A or C or both, but it's not A and C. Well, they could both happen, but it's not required here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.